Hey guys, for this series I'm in Fujian province in the far southeast of China and I'm here to explore the southern styles of Chinese Kung Fu. As you know, most of my experience in China has been with northern styles, such as Mantis, which is one I practice, but I've decided to come and try out something a bit different and to learn about southern Kung Fu. And for this series I've got a very special guest just over here. Oh, hey guys! This is uh, Jesse Enkamp, aka the Karate Nerd. So Jesse, you want to tell us a bit about what you're here for? Yeah, I'm here because I want to explore the connection between Karate, which obviously is my chosen martial art, and how it relates to Kung Fu, more specifically the Southern styles, how they came to Okinawa, which is the birthplace of Karate, and then how that spread through the rest of the world. And of course, Will is going to help me to translate with these different masters and navigate through the cultural landscape over here. So I'm very grateful for that. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, so we're going to be in Fuzhou and Quanzhou, and we're also going to be going to Yongchun, which is the ancestral home of Crane. And yeah, come along, see what we get up to. Trenjo actually has a really, really similar to vibe to Penang in Malaysia. Unfortunately, the main street's completely under renovation right now, so you can't really get the feel for it, but it does have the same vibe as Penang in Malaysia, as I said. And the reason is a lot of Malaysian Chinese actually come from Trenjo, and they migrated from, from Trenjo here and settled in Penang and they took the local architectural style as their influence when Penang was being built. And it's no coincidence that in Malaysia Penang is actually one of the largest centres for Chinese martial arts along with the capital Kuala Lumpur. So yeah, hopefully I'll try and get down there sometime and film the local styles in, in Malaysia. Not only do they have Fujian styles, they also have uh, styles practiced by the Hakka, which are like an ethnic minority from the mountainous regions of the inland southern China. So yeah, that would be a really nice follow-up to this series. So yeah, stay tuned for that. So the reason we're here in Quanzhou is to learn about the Southern Shaolin Temple and to explore the art of Wuzhu Quan. And then from here we're going to go to a rural area just outside of Quanzhou called Yongchun County, which is the ancestral home of Crane style and also by default some people say it's the home of Wing Chun. So before we go off and interview all these different masters and learn about southern Chinese martial arts, I thought for some context we should visit the Southern Shaolin Temple. 
Now, you know, from my series earlier in the year, I spent some time at the Northern Shaolin Temple learning about the old styles of Shaolin and how they're preserved in the rural areas around Shaolin Temple and Dongfeng. So now I'm here in Quanzhou, which is in Fujian Province, and this is the Southern Shaolin Temple. See, there's actually currently three Southern Shaolin Temples in Fujian Province, and it's kind of a little bit controversial with each of the three temples because they're all modernly built, right? The they're all modernly built, so it's quite controversial with each of the three claiming that they're the authentic Southern Shaolin Temple, and they've all got their own claims. For example, this one here at Quanzhou, there's some old ruins, and then at the, the one in Putian and the other one in Fuqing, they've got their own claims, archaeological sites, or, or sort of vague written records, or whatever. So it's a little bit different to the Northern Temple, in that um, it's not quite so it's not quite so sort of established. So as we we're in Quanzhou, we decided that out of the three southern temples, we'd pick this one to come and visit, just to get a bit of context and understand uh, the background of southern Chinese martial arts. You see, in the south, you've got two main areas for Kung Fu. One is Fujian province, which is where we are, and the other is Guangdong province, or which used to be called Canton. So. Fujian has the, I would say, the older southern styles. A lot of the Cantonese styles, they originated from Fujian province, from this area. And almost all of the southern Kung Fu styles, they claim their origin at the southern Shaolin Temple. So we're going to go in, have a walk around, uh, talk a little bit about the history of southern Chinese Kung Fu and why the Shaolin Temple is so important in the mythology of the styles. And from there, yeah, then we're going to go off and do some interviews, meet some different masters and learn about the various Fujian styles. said when we were just at the entrance to the temple, the southern Shaolin temple, which is actually newly built on what they say is the original site, is uh, really, really important in southern Chinese Kung Fu's kind of mythology and also the mythology of the Chinese triads, like the kind of mafia. And We'll learn, we'll learn a little bit more detailed history from the masters that we're going to interview on our trip, but I'll just kind of give you an overview. So basically, the story goes that the Northern Temple, which is in Henan, um, and I said I visited it, that temple was burnt down several times in Chinese history because they often fell in and out of favor with the emperors of various dynasties. And they say, one sort of version of history goes that when the northern temple was burnt down the monks fled to the south and set up a temple here and another version of the story goes that because the Shaolin monks were used in sort of like militias um, sort of raised as like small armies and stuff that used to help the emperors overthrow rebellions and take care of pirates and things the emperor at some point in history requested the Shaolin monks to come down to Fujian to help help uh, defend the coast against Japanese pirates. So that's another possible reason why there's a southern Shaolin temple. And most of the martial arts styles that are in Fujian, they claim that they are descended from monks that survived this temple when it was destroyed and then they sort of went into hiding in like Trenzhou or Fuzhou like in the cities and they taught they taught people their martial arts there. Right so we're up in the mountain just behind the modernly built Shaolin temple right now and we're looking for the ruins of what they say was the original temple which was burnt down or destroyed and back inside the temple I was saying to you that the not only uh, southern styles of kung fu but also triads like chinese mafia also uh, claim like a connection to the southern shaolin temple 
And the reason is, although now the triads are like organized crime, they actually started off as revolutionary groups. You see, in the year I think it was 1644, the Qing Dynasty was founded, and that was when uh, nomadic people from the northeast called the Manchu people uh, invaded China and took control of China, and they overthrew the Ming Dynasty, which was the last dynasty of native Han Chinese emperors. And so people, they were still loyal to the previous emperors, and they didn't like these new uh, Manchu rulers. Particularly down here in the south, there was heavy, heavy anti-Manchu sentiment. So a lot of uh, revolutionary movements begun where people wanted to overthrow the emperors. They called it Fan Qing Fu Ming, which is to oppose the Qing and restore the Ming. And so these revolutionary groups, they were like secret societies that were involved in, yeah, they were trying to overthrow the the government, overthrow the emperor, and to restore the restore China to Han Chinese rule. So according to local mythology, a lot of these revolutionary groups gathered at the Southern Shaolin Temple and used it as a base for their anti-government activities. Now of course the Qing rulers wouldn't have liked this, so it's said that they then came and burnt down the Southern Shaolin Temple too, forcing these groups to scatter, which laid the foundations for the modern day triads. Not only did these triad groups scatter, but the martial arts that were being practiced by these militant revolutionaries also scattered all over southern China. The most prominent myth in the area being that there were five elders who survived the burning of the temple and that these five monks laid the foundations for the majority of southern Chinese Kung Fu styles that we see today. And most of these styles claim their lineages back to one of these five monks. However, I want to also emphasize that this is all just <coughs> mythology and that there's no real historical records of any of this taking place, which is why you can see that the Southern Shaolin Temple is modernly built and it's very, very different to the situation up in the north of China, where although the Northern Shaolin Temple was also burnt down, a lot of the original buildings still remain. I really remember most of the farm. <laughs> like 108 moves, I thought but. that was pretty cool. Yeah. So in our next episode, we're going to visit Master Jiang Xiaofeng, and he's the top master in Trenzhou City of five ancestors or Wuzhou Quan. So Wuzhou Quan is the main style that the monks are all practicing at Shaolin Temple now, and so. I think if I understand correctly, I think it was Master Zhang who was responsible for teaching the, the uh, monks here. Hey, ni hao, ni hao, ni hao.